guys. Okay, I'm gonna turn this in. I had laryngitis for three weeks, and I don't know why they've had me on steroids twice. I've gone through multiple boxes of tea, multiple bottles of running, like an endless supply of like Dayquil, Theraflu, Musinex, and it's still here. Um, but I wanted to tell you about this book that I read recently. It's Where You End by Avid Goller. It's about these mirror image twins who escape a cult. But they get into an accident, and one of the girls doesn't remember it at all. Um, she wakes up, the only thing that she knows is her sister, too, and her name, her sister, Jude's name. She doesn't remember anything about their past. So Jude takes on the role of caretaker, and also trying to build her memories, build Kat's memories. And Jude goes to work. And when Matt stays at home, Jude tells them not to water too far. Cat kind of looks at it as a suggestion, as opposed to like something she's supposed to follow. So she's wandering around and she starts going to this bar with a stranger that she met playing cards. And during one of their bird playing games, she loses a significant amount of money. She gets really mad. She goes and she breaks some stuff in the bar. And she doesn't know why she did that. She asks her sister who she was because obviously there's something in her that gets set off easily. And her sister gives her some more backstory about their um, mom dying in an accident and her dad leaving them when they were really young. And about a trip to Europe that they took where they went to a whole bunch of different countries and they met some people. She even puts Kat in contact with one of the people that they met, um, a woman named Wen, who sends her pictures that they took when they were in Europe. And Kat mm. starts to see some things that don't add up. And so she starts kind of. She starts asking Jude questions, and Jude always has an answer for it, but Kat has a feeling that Jude is lying to her, like, a lot of lies. And over in this guy that she's been playing cards with, they kind of start dating, and they're off and on again because, I mean, at this point, Kat's kind of crazy. And, uh, things are going pretty well, I think, and Kat takes a day and goes off to where Jude told her their childhood home was. And she goes to the library and she asks the woman, hey, can you get the records on the purchases and sales of this house? And the woman's like, yeah, I'll come back in a week and I'll have it for you. So she goes back in a week and it ends up that this house has been in another family for generations. And so at this point she knows that Jude has been lying and she doesn't quite know why. And she runs into her mom, who was supposedly dead. And I just, it sets off this whole chain of events where Kat leaves Jude. Um, she just kind of shuts her down, stops talking to her. And Jude goes to the mom's house and she tries to explain it to Kat. But Kat's not listening. But the last thing she says is, look in the shed. So here we have the beginning of where Kat kind of starts on burying Robert Frost. And it is it is a heartbreaking book. Um there's a lot of I mean the character development was really well really well written. This guy that Kat was going to the bar and playing cards with, um, he takes her to an anger management group that he's been going to because his brother had a drug problem and he was always stealing from him and um, the guy was really angry about it and so this this is what he ended up in the anger management but there's this one part and I'm not supposed to quote anything from the book because it's just an ARC. But this one part really got to me about how the brother's addiction affected Sab. And it was just the realest thing I've ever read in a fiction book ever in my entire life. It was really, it was really, um, it was really intense. But the whole of the book was really good. The character development was good. There was a couple of things that, you know, when you're dealing with amnesia in the past and these kind of psychological thrillers, there's always something that 
if he thinks he's part of it, it doesn't quite fit in the puzzle, but um, I've yet to run into one of the psychological thrillers that doesn't leave something quite like that. It was a phenomenal book, and I've been straddling the fence between a 4.25 and 4.5. I end up with a 4.25 because, obviously, law of routing up if I put it at 4.5, and it wasn't a perfect book. Um, but it was really good, and I do intend on picking up some more of the author's books because this wasn't her first. One of the things that confused me, though, was the cover, because when you get to the part about the masks, they were not rabbits. And the cover with the rabbit mask is actually part of the reason why I requested this from Nick Alley. Um, but other than that, I mean, there wasn't, there wasn't too much to complain about with it. It's a really interesting story. Um, so, there you have it. I hope you've all been doing really, really well. And hopefully this goes away soon and I can start posting more videos. Because I've done it again. <laughs> I requested too many ARCs. So I think I have like seven from NetGalley and I have one from Simon & Schuster. I'm also digging classes still. Full-time, working full-time, mom full-time. So, kind of bit off more than I could chew. And I'm trying to catch up. <laughs> so, but if anybody knows how to get rid of this, I'd really appreciate it. I have no idea why it's still there. But it, no way. I have learned values for three weeks. I don't understand what's happening. But anyway, y'all have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe below.